Baltimore Colts in Briggs Stadium. Lions get on the board in the first period as Jim Martin sends home a booming 52-yard field goal, the longest of his career, and the Lions lead 3-0. Lion defense holds, and so the Colts' Steve Myra tries one from 48 yards out. Steve's boot is perfect, and it's Colts 3, Lions 3 at the quarter mark. The Lions open the second period as Jim Donowski drops back and fires complete to Gail Cogdell. Cogdell carries through the Colts for 55 yards to the Baltimore 5. Hopalong Cassidy darts over left tackle and fights his way in for the touchdown. The Lions enjoy a 10-3 edge. Johnny Unitas is at the reins as the Colts storm back. Unitas fires down the middle to Raymond Berry for 21 yards. Unitas fakes beautifully, then throws out on the left flat to Berry for another first down. Unitas almost fakes our camera on this one as he again throws for Barry. Raymond does a half twist on one leg and hangs on for one of his sensational catches. After intermission, the angry Lions roar again as Nanowski throws to Jim Gibbons. Jim gets 35 yards before Johnny Sample edges him out of bounds. Lion blockers make a highway for Nick Petrosani and the Detroit steamroller paves a path for 30 yards to the Baltimore three. Danowski calls his own number as he streaks past the stunned Colts and in for the score. The Hungry Lions even the score at 17 all after three quarters. In the final period, Jim Martin takes aim on the goal post 51 yards away. The ball hits the crossbar and bounces through for three points as the Lions get back on top 20 to 17. The Colts try to get going, but Jim Martin is at it again. Jim crashes into Unitas. The fumble is recovered by number 53, Bill Glass, as the Lions take over. Janowski fades back to pass, but Ordell Bracey breaks loose and collars the Lion quarterback for a 13-yard loss. The Colts defense holds, so Jim Martin tries a field goal from 40 yards away. His line drive kick clears the crossbar, and Detroit adds three more to lead 23 to 17. Johnny Unitas and the Colts try to come from behind, but Dick Night Train Lane derails the attempt. Nine-year defensive base sprints 80 yards untouched to put the icing on the cake as the Lions pull the upset of the season to earn their first victory at the expense of the world champion Colts. The San Francisco 49ers and the Detroit Lions determined to do or die in the tight Western Conference race meet in San Francisco's Kizar Stadium with 48,000 Bay Area rooters on hand for the struggle. It's a defensive battle until midway in the second quarter when Detroit makes a break as Night Train Lane intercepts a Brody pass and sets up the Lions on their own 41. Jim Nanowski comes in to take charge of the Detroit offense. He lofts a long pass in the direction of the prospector goal. Dan Lewis has Dave Baker beaten, and he pulls in the ball to boost the Lions into a 7-0 lead on the 55-yard play. In the third quarter, the Lions stop a prospector drive on the five. But here they come again as John Brody connects with Clyde Connor at the Lions' 35. Again, Brody passes. Connor's catch makes it first and 10 at the Detroit 21. Joe Perry, the pile-driving prospector fullback, towers over the middle to the Lions' 14 as the third quarter ends. It's fourth down on the two as Perry tries to go wide, but the play is diagnosed perfectly by Night Train Lane. Joe is wrestled down for a nine-yard loss, and the Lions hold again. The Lions can't push one across either, and Yale Lowry punts for Detroit. Former Big Ten Sprint champion Abe Woodson takes the ball on the San Francisco 25. Woodson lives up to his reputation by wheeling through the Lions on a 48-yard return. Woodson's effort is wasted as the Lions pour in on Brody on fourth down. Brett Schneider chases Brody. 
Walker and Joe Schmidt bring him down. Brody fumbles and J.D. Smith recovers the loose ball. But the 49ers get to the 42 and no part. The Lions take over and send Nick Petrosani racing around right in. Nick breaks loose to go all the way for the score. And the Lions roar as they lead San Francisco 17 to nothing. The 49ers get one more chance to avoid a shutout, but John Brody's pass intended for Olympic star Ray Norton is intercepted by Bruce Mahar and returned to the 49ers 25. On a double reverse, Terry Barr with a fine block from Bob Schultz gallops around right in for 19 yards and the final score of the game. This great 24 to nothing win by the Lions hands the 49ers their first shutout since 1955 and the first in their history at Kizar Stadium. The Green Bay Packers invade Brick Stadium for their annual Thanksgiving Day battle with the Lions. The Packers can't move in the first quarter and Boyd Dowler punts. Bruce Mahar bursts in to block the kick and the ball goes out of the end zone for a safety as Detroit takes a 2-0 lead. It's a great effort by Mahar who's shaken up on the play. The Lions offense starts to roll as Jim Nanowski backs up quickly and rifles the ball to Dan Lewis. Dan tight ropes down the sideline and scampers into the end zone. But he was out of bounds at the Packer 37. Panowski takes to the air again. His target is Jim Gibbons, who gets 12 yards deeper into Packer territory. Panowski handles the whole job from here. Behind Nick Petrosani's slashing block, Jim scores the first touchdown of the game. It's Detroit 9, Green Bay nothing. In the second quarter, the Lions attack again as Nanowski retreats and flips a down and out pass to his rookie end, Gail Cogdell. Nanowski is picking the Packer defense apart. He goes back and finds Gibbons slanting over the middle for a first down on the Green Bay 10. Ken Webb takes off like a jet as he soars over the Packer line and the Lions move out to a 16 to nothing lead. The Lions are dusting off all the plays in the book and making them work. Terry Barr is on the business end of a double reverse. Barr circles left for 14 yards and a first down. Janowski backpedals, looking over his shoulder for a receiver. Hank Grimminger has Gail Cogdell covered. But Gale makes the grab anyway to make it goal to go. Janowski steps back and fires for points, but M. Connell applies the stopper with a clutch interception. And Detroit has to be satisfied with a 16-0 halftime lead. Lamar McCann sparks a third quarter Packer comeback. He passes to Max McGee at the far sideline as Green Bay moves to the Lions 22. The Packers turn loose their great running fullback, Jim Taylor. Jim jars to the Detroit 11 as Green Bay threatens for the first time in the game. The Lions defense is tough today, but Paul Horning salvages three points with a 12-yard field goal. Detroit 16, Green Bay 3. The Lions can't make a first down. The Packers show them how. Jim Taylor finds another nice hole at left tackle and sprints through for a 19-yard gain. Paul Horning shows the way from the nine by driving straight ahead to score. The game tightens up with Green Bay just six points back at 16 to 10. Lions are forced to punt after three downs and Yale Larry gets one away. Willie Wood loses sight of the ball in the early afternoon sun. It gets away from him and Bruce Mahar recovers for Detroit on the Packer 13. That's all Nanowski needs to lengthen his lead. Jim throws on the run to Gibbons, and the Lions roar to a 23-10 victory, their third win of the season. The Lions are at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore to try for a clean sweep in their two-game series with the Colts. The Colts lead 2-0 on a blocked punt safety as the Lions move the ball. Our slow motion camera shows Dan Lewis get loose on an off tackle slant. Lewis careens through the Colts secondary for 21 yards.
Lewis's run sets up the Lions for a Jim Martin field goal from 20 yards away. Detroit leads 3-2. to two. In the second period, Colt Lightning strikes the Lions. Johnny Unitas tosses to Lenny Moore at the far sideline. Moore gets away from his defender and takes off like an Olympic sprinter. It's an 80-yard touchdown that gives Baltimore an 8-3 lead. In the final moments of the first half, Jim Donowski has the Lions threatening. But he's hit as he throws the ball and Bobby Boyd intercepts. Boyd breaks out on a 74-yard return. The Colts bid for a score before the half. Our slow motion camera rolls as Unitas looks for a receiver. Roger Brown, number 76, Bill Glass, number 53, break through to down Unitas. And Baltimore holds an 8-3 advantage at halftime. After a scoreless third quarter, things begin to pop midway in the final period. Unitas passes for the Colts. Nick LeBeau intercepts for Detroit. Earl Morrill is at the controls and sends up a long pass aimed for the end zone. Hopalong Cassidy grabs it at the goal line and hangs on as he bangs into the goal post full force. Cassidy's score puts Detroit in front 10 to 8. Moments later, the Lions are back in business as the Colts gamble on fourth down and lose. Watch in slow motion as Morrill decoys the defense, then flips a delayed pass to Nick Petrosani, who rocks the Colts with a 22-yard gain. With a minute 19 seconds left in the game, Jim Martin boots home a 47-yard field goal. And it looks like the end of the line for Baltimore as Detroit moves out in front 13 to 8. But the Colts know how to keep moving without using too much time. Johnny Unitas spots Jim Mutchler over the middle for 19 yards, and the Colts call time. Baltimore moves into Detroit territory with Unitas firing to Barry, who goes out of bounds at the Lions 45. Unitas has already run eight plays, and there are 14 seconds left as he fires for the end zone. Lenny Moore makes an unbelievable catch, and the Colts lead 15 to 13. The fans rush onto the field, and it takes a few minutes before the final 14 seconds can be played. The Colts kick off. Colt fans think it's all over but the shouting as Bruce Mahar returns the ball to the Detroit 35. But there are 10 seconds left on the clock, and the Lions aim to use them. <laughs> Earl Morrow fades back, sends one over the middle to Jim Gibbons. Gibbons is in full stride as he grabs the ball over his shoulder and veers away from the only man who could stop him. It's a 65-yard touchdown that wins the game as the clock runs out on the play. The Lions' sensational 20 to 15 victory. Their second win of the season over the Colts keeps their hopes alive for a chance at the Western Conference title. The Lions still in contention for runner-up spot in the Western Conference on the strength of six victories in their last eight games square off against the Chicago Bears in the season's finale at Briggs Stadium. In the first quarter, Detroit's Ken Webb burst through a big hole at right tackle, and the Lions are in the Bears' backyard. From the Chicago 15, Earl Morrill's clever faking sends the defense to the left, while the Lion quarterback bootlegs the ball around right end to score. Detroit leads 7 to nothing. The Lions shift into high gear the next time they get the ball as fullback Nick Petrosani rips off 18 yards. As Morrill steps back to throw, Terry Barr is in the end zone, shaking loose from his defender long enough to spear the touchdown toss. Detroit leads 13 to nothing at the end of one quarter. In the second period, Earl Morrow lifts an aerial meant for Dave Middleton, but it overshoots the target, and J.C. Caroline makes a diving interception on the Chicago one. Fullback Johnny Adams tries to wedge through, but runs into a stone wall, and is dropped behind his goal line, giving Detroit a safety. The Lions edge further ahead, 15 to nothing. 
moment later, Chicago passer Zeke Bratkowski connects with Willie Gallimore in the right flat. But a vicious tackle by Gary Lowe jars the ball loose. Joe Schmidt picks it up at the 14, dribbles once, and goes in to score for Detroit. The Lions boost their margin to 21 to nothing. With two minutes remaining in the half, the Bears' Bratkowski pulls out the stops, sends a long pass upfield intended for Will Duvall. But Yale Larry steals the pigskin in Lions territory and returns the ball 22 yards before the Bears can ground him on their 38. The assignment is carried out by Nick Petrosani, who goes barreling down the chute on a 31-yard scoring spree. Petrosani now becomes the new all-time Lion rushing leader for one season as Detroit zooms to a 29-0 halftime lead. Following the scoreless third quarter, Earl Morrill sets the Detroit wheels in motion again as he pinpoints Steve Junker with a pass. The Lions are looking for another tally. Petrosani proves he is one of the National Football League's top power runners by blasting into pay dirt for his second touchdown. The Lions total now reads 36 to nothing. With less than four minutes remaining, Ed Brown hits Harlan Hill with a pass. The play nets 45 yards as the Bears try to avert a shutout. But the Lions come storming through as Brown goes back to pass and linebacker Wayne Walker hauls him down to end the threat. The Lions 36 to nothing whitewashing of the Bears ties them with San Francisco for second place in the Western Conference. The Lions point total in their series with the 49ers earns them the nod for Miami's playoff bowl game. The Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida is the scene of the first National Football League playoff bowl game between the Cleveland Browns and the Detroit Lions. Sam Baker punts for the Browns late in the first quarter. Jim Steffen fields the ball for the Lions and roars up the sideline. Stephen laterals to Jim Martin, who adds a short bonus to the 45-yard punt return. Cleveland takes over the ball on an intercepted pass to open the second period. Milt Plum gives to Jim Brown, who blasts through the Lions and adds 21 more yards to his sensational rushing record. Bill Glass and Gary Lowe finally stop the powerful Brown fullback. Plum hits Bobby Mitchell with a quick pass. And the elusive speeder dashes by one lion before he's tackled on the 16-yard line. Plum doesn't wait for an invitation as he promptly pitches a touchdown pass to Rich Kreitling in the Lions' end zone, where he's hit by Bruce Maher. The fumbles after the score. The Browns hang on to their touchdown advantage at halftime. Detroit's Nick Petrosani finds a clear trail straight ahead as he sparks the Lion offense to open the second half. When the Lions get close enough to strike, Petrosani delivers the payoff punch. Jim Martin adds the conversion that ties the score 7-7. Jim Minowski takes advantage of an intercepted pass later in the third quarter. He sees daylight up the middle and charges deep in Brown territory. It's goal to goal for Detroit. When Cleveland halts the Lions' advance, Jim Martin sends the Detroit team out in front with a field goal. The Lions lead for the first time in the game, 10 to 7. Bill Plum finds Bobby Mitchell out in the flat. Mitchell wheels and deals for 27 yards as the Browns move late in the third period. Plum has the right combination and again hits shifty halfback Mitchell. The Browns creep 10 yards closer. Jim Brown takes a quick pitch from Milt Plum and the Cleveland ground gainer chews up 13 yards for a first down as the third period ends. At the beginning of the final period, Sam Baker ties the count with a 27-yard field goal. His effort makes the score 10-10. The Lions catch the Browns by surprise on a deep reverse with Terry Barr taking the handoff from Nick Petrosani for 17 yards. The Lions roar louder as they threaten to break the tie. 
Nick Petrosani, the Detroit record-breaking ground gainer, powers his way over tacklers as the Lions' surge continues. Dan Lewis swings to the outside and finds clear sailing until Bobby Franklin forces him out of bounds short of the goal line. Ken Webb bolts into the line and scores a big touchdown for the Lions. Detroit leaps ahead 17 to 10 as Jim Martin makes his placement. The Browns will have to hurry if they're going to catch the hungry Lions. Bill Plum looks to strike quickly, and his best target is Bobby Mitchell. Mitchell is a magician when it comes to appearing out in the open. One of the game's great breakaway threats, Mitchell outlegs the Lions defenders for an explosive 89-yard gallop, despite a sudden cramp in his leg. The injured star sets Cleveland hopes high with the conversion needed to tie the score. When the pass from center is momentarily fumbled, Dick Night Train Lane storms through to spoil Cleveland's attempt for a tie game. The Lions win the first playoff bowl game in the history of the National Football League in a 17-16 thriller. This great win puts the cap on the 1960 season, which saw the Lions lose their first three games and then roar back to end up in a tie for second place in the Western Conference. What a great year 1960 was for the Detroit Lions and National League football. The 1961 season should be a thriller. So get your season tickets and see all the Lions.